Okay, I had a customer email me some photographs of a project he was cutting. He's cutting these uh, banks. I, maybe a uh, project on Vectric or v Vectric software as a project file. I've seen them before, these uh, Indian Head and Buffalo Nickel um, banks. And he's, he's cut eight of them. And two of them blew out in the same position of the profile cuts. Um, he was using an eighth-inch ball nose, did the inside work just fine. When it was doing the perimeter cut, He's got two areas that were blowing out. So let's get a look at what he was doing. And I, he wasn't in front of his computer when I spoke to him, uh, so I had emailed him what I thought it was. Um, and he's using compression spiral to cut it out. So I think it's while it's ramping in, it's not in the portion of the bit that's in the down spiral part yet. It's in the up spiral part. So I'm thinking that's when it's blowing out. He wasn't watching it um, when, that, when it happened, so he wasn't sure. So my guess is we've got to have it ramp in a different way uh, so that it's at depth before it gets to the circle, the profile that he need, is needing to cut out. So let's get a look at this. Okay, so in VCarve Pro, I've got a circle there. We're going to go straight to the machining side, and I'm going to do a profile cut on the outside with a 0.77 depth of cut, quarter-inch tool, blah, blah, blah. Um, do a separate last pass. I typically would turn that on so that I can have a clean edge, but we're not going to worry about it at this point. And I'll just tell it to add ramps and calculate. No vectors were selected. I'll grab this one and say, go ahead and do it. And there we are. Reset the preview, slow it down a bit, and preview the visible. So we're starting here at the bottom for whatever reason. I didn't tell it where to start. It optimized where it, it started. So I'll speed it up and let it finish. And we'll look at those. That was profile four. I'm sorry, I had already done this. So we'll double click on this. And let's get a look at that. Um, when we told it to do a ramp, it is ramping along the vector in that circle that we were that we've dri that we've drawn. So it's going to, in this case, start here, ramp this direction, following the vector. So the first bit of the cut is going to be the up shear part of the bit. And I think what's happened in on his case, he was starting his cut here and coming this way, and that's where it broke out. So let's look at how we can change that. We can change the leads and say add a, add a lead, and I'll do a circular lead with a three inch lead length, and let's see what that does. And what that's going to do is start here, ramp its way in, get to depth, and then it'll be at the point two depth, or whatever depth we were going to tell it to do for the first pass, so that we're in the down shear portion of his compression spiral. So we're going to ramp down to whatever depth we say for the first pass before it hits the circle, before it hits our vector, and then it'll do its pass. And I've told it to ramp in and ramp out with that circular entry. So... Um, We'll go ahead and look at what that does. I'll slow it down a bit. So it started above the material, came down to depth, made its run, and then worked its way out. It's jumping a little bit because I'm doing the video work at the same time. So we'll let that go. So that's fine. But in the case of what he's got, I can't do that there because I'd have to sp spread my coins out a little bit more. So I can move that starting point from here to somewhere else, say here. So how do we do that? Because right now we're letting uh, VCarve decide where to, to do the starting. So if we go to the ramping area and we're having it start at an optimized start point. So Vectric is doing the decision making there. So we can change that. We can tell it to use that starting point, but then I'm gonna move it out of the way to here. So keep the current start points no matter what. So every time I recalculate it, it doesn't change to optimize start points. It'll go with the starting points that I have and endpoints for the particular vector that I'm working with. So how do we move that starting point? Um, well, if I go to node mode by hitting the right button and go to edit node mode or hit N on the keyboard, I don't have an option to change it to a start point, but I can insert a point here and then I just hit the right button, and I'll say make that the start point. So now we should be starting here. So it'll start here, ramp its way in and down, hit the vector, be at the depth of cut that I want, and then make the passes. So let's have it calculate that and see how that looks, and that's done it. I don't have to look at it, but I will. I didn't reset the preview. Turn it back on. Reset preview, preview visible. There we are. Multiple passes because that was on high speed. Uh, so that'll be fine, and if I were to drop drop a line across there, yeah, I can see that that would work okay, because that's with the spacing that I had. If, if I had the two different nickel faces 
lined up on one on top of the other with a bit of a space there that would have worked fine but i can move that if i want i could if I, I can move it here hit the right button and make that the start point boom and recalculate doesn't matter so i'll just recalculate it and off we go and it's moved it further down so this, this is doing a few things. We're changing the starting point that the software is using for the ramp in and ramp out. We're adding a lead to that so that it's getting to depth, to the proper depth, before we get to the vector that we want to cut. And we're de determining where it's going to start. Are we letting Vectric software optimize it, or are we going to decide it? So that's what we want to do right there. But then we're going to come up and edit the passes. He's using a compression spiral. So that's a 3 16 up cut, typically. So 3 divided by 16 equal. That's 0.1875. So I want to be deeper than the up spiral part. So I want to be, say, 0.2 deep for the first pass. Okay, so we want to set this to be a 0.2 depth for the first pass. So if we look at this, I'm going to break this and tell it to apply it. So my first pass is going to be 0.2. So I'm going to get from the top of the material down 0.2. So that's my 3 16 up spiral plus a little bit. So by the time it hits right here, it's going to be using the down spiral portion of that compression bit. It'll work its way around. It'll work its way and come out. Now, why do we want it to come out? Well, after we do multiple passes and it's lift, it stops and lifts up and comes back over here, it could create some snipe on the edge of that part. So why not just have it pull out? get off the vector and that way as it's lifting up and dropping down it's not against the a piece that's going to be a finished piece um, of the of the work so I'm going to change this I don't need seven passes I'll, I'll do it in five I'll reset this to point two because when I change the number of passes it changed it back to five equals so I'm going to go point two to get into it and then point two to point three to point three to point four six and it's just doing the math and letting it work so five passes that looks good I'll add tabs and I'll edit the tabs and I'll place them here, 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 and here. Um, you know, if I want to move a tab, go on top of it while I'm in tab mode and just hold down the left button. I can drag it anywhere I want. If I want to delete a tab, be on top of a tab and just tap it and it'll go away. I'll put it back. Um, so there we go. And I've got my tabs three quarters of an inch long and a quarter inch thick. I, and, a, and a 3D. It goes a little faster if you use 3D tabs. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and calculate that. Reset the preview. Slow it down so we can see it. And down to the depth of cut. Makes its way around. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And finishes. And there's my tabs. So my guess is that that is the issue that uh, Johnny had. And uh, so here's a couple different things that we worked on today. We uh, did a ramp in and ramp out with a helical entry coming in from outside the vector to the vector. We changed the starting point of the geometry from here to here. And we selected in the ramping information, we selected where we wanted it to start, whether we let VCarve optimize it or we told it where the start to use the start and end point of the vector that we've selected. So that's pretty cool. It's very powerful and very simple. So um, if you're using compression spiral, that's most likely what happened. Um, and again, if he was using something with tighter grain, he may not have had that problem. But you know, pine's gonna pine's gonna blow out like that. That doesn't really surprise us. But uh, it it lets us him develop his uh, his skills as he's as he's doing some of this. So that's that's a lot of fun. So so hopefully that's what it was. Um, Johnny was when I spoke to him this afternoon. He was about to clock in for work so he's going to give me a call back after he runs it or shoot me an email uh he's been real good at doing that again i sell the yeti smart bench anywhere in the united states um i support my customers i have a pretty good working knowledge of vcarve and aspire uh so i can help you work your way through the learning curve associated with the yeti smart bench so uh let me help you in any way i can go to www.yetismartbench.com hit the request a demo um, and I'll get back with you just as soon as I can, or you can give me a call at 205-871-6618. Thanks. Appreciate you watching my channel.